Virgo, it's Suzanne with Sunny Forest Tarot here to do a weekly reading for you. All right, so I'm going to be doing a reading from a higher perspective today. So I am going to turn over all the cards right from the get-go. Um, that's not something that you see me do very often, but I'm doing it today. All right, all right, so let's see what we got going on. All right, for Virgo, what do we got? All right, so we have Eight of Swords. We have Seven of Swords. <clears throat> and we have Knight of Swords. Oh my goodness. Four of Pentacles and Judgment. What is going on with Virgo? All right. So from a higher perspective, all right, we definitely have air energy dominating. One, two, three. All right. Um, Eight of Swords, Seven of Swords, and Knight of Swords. All air energy. So this is about what you are manifesting right now, what you're thinking about, what you're analyzing or Potentially what you're communicating, whether it's verbally, non-verbally, okay, or in the written form of some kind. All right, so in some way here, you are definitely struggling with something, struggling with how you are thinking about something. Um, the Eight of Swords says, on some level, you feel, you know, that you're wrapped up in something that you can't get out of. You know, and I feel like there are days that you don't want to get out of it. There are days that you absolutely want to unwrap yourself. So why do I say that? I say that because Seven of Swords is sitting right next to the Eight of Swords, which is about, is about deception in some way. And Eight of Swords is completely about, um, you know, keeping yourself in a situation, you're keeping yourself in that situation. You're choosing it. And because some days you, you know, you feel like you want to be in that situation and other days you don't feel like you want to be in that situation. So the days that you don't feel like you want to be in that situation, what is it that you tell yourself to get yourself through that, that day? Seven of Swords. All right. Um, you know, you tell yourself something to get yourself through the day. Now, we've got the Knight of Swords over here as well. Knight of Swords is, you know, communication. I kind of like to look at the Knight of Swords as communication without really fully thinking it through. You know, it's almost very extroverted energy. I look at the Knight of Pentacles as very introverted energy. They want to say the exact perfect thing at the exact perfect time. And it may take them a long time to do it. <laughs> but Knight of Swords is extroverted energy, not necessarily thinking it through, and saying it when it comes to you in the moment. All right? So, you know, you might be communicating. The question for you is, are you communicating like this when you're choosing to be wrapped up in something? Or are you communicating like this when you're, you know, when you don't want to be wrapped up in something? I'm feeling like you're choosing to communicate without thinking when you really don't want to be wrapped up in something. And that causes clumsy communication. When the best time to communicate, I feel like in this situation, is when you are choosing to be wrapped up in something. And, you know, whatever this is, whatever this is for you. 
something has a hold on you and you want that something in your life in some way, but there's part of you that doesn't want this in your life as well. That's a, that's a tough situation. All right, so Four of Pentacles. Four of Pentacles, you're holding on to something and you're holding back from something at the same time. And again, the reason I, I say that is because of the Seven of Swords in the middle here. You're holding on to something and at, at the same time, whatever you're holding on to, you're holding back from as well. It's like, it's a dichotomy for you. And Virgo, that's kind of how you live your life. You know, because there's a level of perfectionism that you have going on always, you know. There's sometimes that this situation feels really, really good and, you know, maybe almost perfect. It's like perfect on paper, but there's, sometimes there's just a missing factor. So, you know, if it's a relationship, you know, whoever this person is looks great on paper. You know, they fulfill something in you. They fulfill the norm for you. They help you to fit into society. But there's also something that you might just be like, I don't know, you know, you, you know, the hermit is your energy. So I feel like this might be a little bit of um, split energy for you between your best self by yourself or your best self with somebody else. There might be the ideal person around you that enhances you, but at the end of the day, you know, you want to go home to your perfectly clean house. Something like that. So, Judgment. I feel like judgment is about self-judgment for you in this particular reading. Judgment is, whoops, is about, it's about a rebirth or a reconnection or a reconciliation, but it's also about just pure judgment. All right, so... Let's see, let's do this Eight of Swords, Seven of Swords, Four of Pentacles. All right, Eight of Swords. Then we have the Magician. All right, so that's, I like seeing the Magician over the Eight of Swords. And that's why I'm feeling that when you want to be wrapped up in, you know, whatever this is or whoever this is, um, you have control over it. The magician says you have all the tools to create whatever it is that you want to create. So you create something when you want to be with this person or you want to be in this, situ this situation, but you also have the tools when you don't want to be in this situation or you don't want to be with this person, you get yourself out of it, okay? Seven of Swords, wow. Ace of Cups, hmm. Ace of Cups. Ace of Cups is, definitely can be about something that's opening up to you emotionally. Um, Ace of Cups is about somebody or something offering you potentially emotional fulfillment. So for some of you, this might be a new connection 
or a reconnection. Ace of Cups coming over deception. I feel like if you've been in a relationship for a while, um, I feel like this is you. I feel like um, this is how you, this is how you might deceive. This is how you manifest magician. So, you know, again, like I said, when you want to be in something, you're in it. When you don't want to be in something, somehow you get yourself out of it. <laughs> you know, it might be that you um, ghost. It might be that you ignore. It might be that you focus heavily on work. It might be that you remove yourself somehow from the situation. Okay? So... The way that you deceive, and this can be how you deceive yourself, this can be how you deceive another person. Um, right when somebody is starting to get maybe a little bit annoyed with you, you bring a full cup of love to them. Right when your job is starting to feel like you're slipping away from your engagement, you bring a full cup in. And you get right back in and you've got the charm you know you've you know you've got the um, the work ethic you make this happen on a regular basis and nobody is the wiser but I feel like that is your coping mechanism when it comes to um, pulling yourself away or running away or not wanting to be wrapped up in something. You just bring a full cup of whatever is needed to re-engage. All right, so Four of Pentacles, Empress. Okay. Holding on to something or holding back from something. So I feel like your, your indecisiveness, okay, because that's ultimately what we're talking about here, your indecisiveness, um, I feel like the Empress is representing you in this reading you know, the Empress is the, the ideal feminine, the ideal partner, the ideal person. You um, have a way of holding back like your best when it serves you. And you have a way of putting out your best when it serves you as well. And that allows you to hold on to what you want to hold on to. And it also allows you to hold back from what you want to hold back from. You know, this is really exploring Virgo's, you know, true talent. People are confused by you. People are confused by you. And you can be super close to a person. Uh, it can be a casual acquaintance. It can be a family member, but they would all describe you as, you know what? Virgo really comes through in a pinch. Always is there to help me. But at the same time, sometimes Virgo completely disappears on me and I haven't heard from them in weeks. I don't know what's going on from them or with them. There's a Virgo is a dichotomy for sure. And it's like you maximize the benefits from from both aspects. It's really impressive actually. It's really impressive. And I'm not saying it's right, but I'm not judging you. And I'm not saying it's wrong cuz I'm not judging you just something for you to think about. 
Judgment. What do we got here? Judgment is something that a Virgo will do to themselves very harshly, but they will also do to other people as well. All right, so let's see what we have for judgment. Justice, Libra energy. I want one more, one more. Emperor, ooh, okay. All right, so three major arcana there. Judgment, Justice, the Emperor. So we have Libra energy, Aries energy. Oh boy. Um, balancing out Aries energy is almost, it is very challenging. You might be dealing with an Aries, you might be dealing with a Libra. Tor uh, Empress energy is Taurus and Libra, so heavy Libra energy. So, you know, it's interesting that I'm kind of talking about a dichotomy with Virgo, you know, with, you know, being kind of a master at getting what you want on the terms that you want it. So I do feel like there's a huge energy of balance here. There's a mastery of how you go about and I don't want to say manipulating people. I don't feel like that's the intention. Um, I feel like it's a mastery of, of using your best qualities and minimizing your worst. All right. Because Emperor at, you know, at its highest energy, um, you know, is about being a leader. People follow you. People want to follow you. People will trust you. At its lowest energy, you know, it's about control. You control your circumstances and you control um, even other people. And you do it through this. Okay, let's, for example, let's say that you, um, somebody calls you or leaves a message or texts you and you don't get back to them for a week. <laughs> okay, you, you share a full cup with that person when you, a full cup of love. You share a full cup of love with that person when you eventually get back to them. You know you can get back into their good graces very easily. Hey, Barney. Hey, knock it off. Knock it off. All right. <laughs> All right, you're a master. That's a skill. That's a skill. I don't see that. I don't, you know, I see other skills and other signs. But with Virgo, that's masterful. Because I don't feel like you, you hurt other people's feelings along the way. They will be hurt until you bring that full cup of, of love to them. They will forget about it. So you maneuver through your life exactly the way you want to. I respect that. I respect it. All right. So the energy that we have here is a lot of, a, a lot of swords, a lot of air energy. So we're going to get air and with all of this major arcana down here, we're going to get spiritual energy. Okay. Because I feel like I do feel like Virgo is a major manifester. You're very good at that. You're very good at getting what you want. All right, so we've got one there. And we have one here. People easily forgive you because of your charm. All right, and let's get a card from the universe as well. Let's see.
Boom. All right. What do we got? Look at that. A knowing. You, you do have a knowing about how to maneuver and, and manifest magician. You manifest, I feel like, consciously. <clears throat> and that's a power. That's a superpower. What do we have here? The universe's plan. <laughs> all right. So, you know, when we're looking at all of the major arcana here, Empress, Judgment, Justice, the Emperor. You know, I feel like the universe helps you to be the best version of yourself no matter what situation you're in. Because the universe also knows that you're not going to actively try to hurt somebody. Your, your, your dirty deeds, seven of swords, your dirty deeds, and I don't mean, um, I don't mean, whatever you, whatever you define your dirty deeds, okay? Um, but I don't mean that in, strangely enough, I don't mean that in a, a really, in, in a horrible way at all. Like your, your little sneaky dirty deeds, I guess is how I want to put it. Um, you maneuver those with finesse and you don't hurt people when you when you do it and if you do hurt people you catch it right before it becomes a problem because you pay attention to the details you catch it it's impressive I'm, I'm always impressed by Virgo what do we have here from the universe my faith, at, my faith has the power to turn trauma into healing, conflict into growth, and fear into love. If that doesn't describe Virgo perfectly, I don't know what does. That's what I'm talking about here. Is the, that's dichotomy right there. You're able to maneuver. In a, that's your superpower, Virgo. I guarantee it, that's your superpower. Everybody has a superpower, and there are many among each sign. But Virgo, that is your superpower. You, right on the cusp of getting yourself in trouble, you pull out of it with grace. You know the universe's plan for you, intuitively. And it makes your life interesting. It makes your life interesting and kind of magical. And you manifest very easily. This is the one thing that you have to watch out for. Okay? Knight of Swords. Because... That's that energy, whoops. That's that energy of kind of speaking freely without thinking about what you're going to say. That, I feel like, is your vice. All right. All right, that's what I got for you, Virgo. Have a great week. If you're looking for a deeper, more personal reading, certainly reach out. If not, no worries. I will talk to you next time. All right, bye.